folks, my name is Graham Walker and it's my real pleasure tonight, or should I say I'm absolutely tickled to uh, to be uh, interviewing tonight uh, Lady Anne Dodd, uh, the widow of Sir Ken Dodd, who's got to be the greatest comedian we've ever produced, isn't he? Um, uh, what, a, what a marvellous entertainer, not just a great comedian, but also a chart-topping hit maker and a fantastic actor thrown into the, the mix as well. And of course, we're here for something uh, really special, and that's to promote this. Uh, the squire of Naughty Ash and his lady, uh, and his lady obviously being Anne, uh, Lady Dodd. It's a fantastic book um, uh, that's out now. Um, we've got uh, lots of details about how you can uh, get the book. In fact, I'll put something up there now. It's only seventeen ninety nine, and Lady Anne is going to sign every copy as well that we sell. So if you know anybody that's uh, that loves Ken Dodd or actually... You know, I've loved that era. What a great book this is. I, I, in fact, I'm reading it for my second time now. I enjoyed it that much. There's that much in it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it a second time to, uh, to, to really absorb it. So, uh, listen, without any further ado, um, I think uh, what I must do is uh, I want to introduce uh, Lady Anne. Let's bring her in. Hello there. Hello there, Graham. Good, good oh, evening. <laughs> yeah, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Well, it's, it's lovely to see you. We've got lots of people watching tonight, and um, I'm sure that we're going to have lots of questions for you. But be, be, before we start, I've just got to I've just got to say again that how much this book, how special it is. Um, how, how how long did it take to actually write, Lady Anne? Because you're talking about 90 years of uh, of history, and you need to get it right. I know you're you're quite right. I think it took just over a year, really, to get it just about together. And we were lucky. We started um, sort of early 2019 and sort of got the, the bones of it all together by early 20. And of course, then COVID came along. So we were able to do the editing and changing and putting and checking by email. But before that, um, Tony, the writer, Tony Nicholson, would come up to Liverpool. He'd stay in a hotel a couple of days and he'd come to me and we'd spend two or three days recording what I wanted to see, he'd ask the questions, and that's how we did it. But it worked well. We were lucky. We just got that done in the year prior to COVID. Well, absolutely fantastic. And uh, obviously, this is the book. This is what we're talking about. We, there's going to be lots of pictures and images from this that we're going to be showing uh, tonight as well. And we've got a copy to be won. So if you like and share this post, um, I think we've got 24 hours, uh, and we're going to pick a winner. And... Um, uh, well, somebody will be the proud owner of the book that uh, has been written by Lady Anne and by uh, Tony Nicholson as well. We must give Tony a big mention. Um, in terms of the book, it followed the TV programme that you actually made together as well, uh, uh, Anne. Yes, that's right. He made it for uh, BBC Two, How Tickled We Were. And I was, um, I was very pleased with it. Well, the way he did it, he was very sensitive. When he first mooted doing this programme, I wasn't too sure. But... It was done very sensitively and it was e it was quite easy for me to do. He put my my ease to do it and ask questions I was able to answer, which was fantastic. Worked. Well, but do you know what? What a great life and what a great life you had together. Um I mean let's 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 cover that off first. You actually spent forty years with him. Um and, and I suppose if if well he never he was a very private man, wasn't he? He had a private side and a very public side. Yes. Um, and if he had have written a biography, and I think everybody wanted him to do that, this would have been it, wouldn't it? This is the next best thing. Well, it's nice of you to say that. It'll never be anything like the one he would have written because there must be so many things that he would remember um, from his early years. But hopefully we've included a lot of stuff that I hope he would have included. I'm pretty sure he would. But... Um, well, we've, we, we've, got, um, um, we've got some amazing um, footage, actually. We've been given uh, permission uh, to show um, uh, a few minutes worth of, of Ken on stage to remind everybody what a fabulous uh, showman and entertainer he was. So we'll do that, but we'll play that a bit nearer the end of this interview because we've got so much that I need to get through. Um, so, um, I, first of all, I think what would be a great idea is just to show some pictures from the book and and then maybe you can just talk about them, uh, Lady Anne, and tell us a little bit more about um, uh, about the book and about the, the story that, uh, that that you've written here. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've got to show this one first. This is one of my favourite pictures out of the book. What a beautiful picture that is of you both. That was a we, we were at a water rats ball in London. Um, yes, it was a lovely evening, wonderful evening. Uh, I can't remember about nineteen ninety something like that. 
But of course, you know, the the story goes right back to the to the to the start. And one of the one of the stars of the show is actually the um, the house, uh, Oak House, where he was born. And here he is as a young man as well, um, with his siblings. It, it's an important part of the story, the house, isn't it? And and indeed, that's where you are now. He lived there all his life. I'm sitting in just a bit beyond the. If you're looking at it, the furthest right window, just beyond there, has been rebuilt and bought up, so it's a continuation. Um, and I'm in the room just just right of that second little arched window. That's where I'm sitting. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible. Um, so I, I mean, he, he, he was born there. He, he, you actually bought another house together, but you, you never actually spent any time in it, did you? No, I think he always thought we'd retire there, or but he never retired. And of course, you're so busy when you're doing shows and travelling around. Um, you don't really get the time to go anywhere well, else at home and work. You know. Was he ever going to retire? I mean, was that the plan at some stage? Well, I, I think. Exactly. Can you imagine if when COVID came along, he'd have had to, and that would have been the ideal time to write his book. Um, of course, he'd have But you did it instead for him. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and, and again, some, some lovely pictures in here. This is him with his mum and dad, who actually did live long enough, didn't they, to see him actually be a superstar? They went, his mum died in 68, but in the 65, he did the um, Palladium for the first time, his 42-week season. And they went to see that show, and they also went down to see the Royal Show, his first Royal Show he did. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's funny that you mentioned 1968, because I think in the book it said that was probably the pinnacle year for him when he just achieved no. so much. No, it was 65. I'm sorry, I meant that his mum died in 68, so she, at least before she died, she saw all these wonderful years, 65 and 67 at the Palladium. The first, the big year was the 65, because that was getting to the pinnacle. Is that when they did the uh, the 46-week run at the Palladium? For 42, and they argue a bit. They say it's not quite 42 because there was a week off in the middle, but I don't know. He always said 42 weeks. So, um, in incredible. And everybody went to see him. I mean, you had people like um, yeah. uh, Bing Crosby and, and Bob yeah. Oak went to see him. Um, yeah, Bill Shankly and all the Liverpool team went to see him as well. Yeah. Harold yeah. Wilson. He yeah. was the... He was the, the, he was the Biggest star in, in the UK, certainly, wasn't he? So, yes, absolutely. He, he, when he reached top of the bill, I'm, I like, I'm proud enough to say that he never played less than top of the bill in any show he ever did uh, from once he reached top of the bill in the late 50s. Yeah. Uh, and we have some early pictures of him, uh, actually. Um, I think this was, this was a character he created, uh, particularly, wasn't it? Uh, was it Professor yeah. Chuckabutty? Raffle Raff, Raff, Chuckabutty. <laughs> operatic tenor and sausage knotter. I mean, <laughs> but of course, of, of course, the laugh was on everybody else, wasn't it? Because although he started out having fun with music, this is what happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, tears. I think this was was it the third biggest selling single of the nineteen sixties. I believe so. Yes, uh, only the Beatles sold more than that. Uh, yes, it was amazing. And you say only the Beatles saw more. We're talking about things like She Loves You, aren't we? And things like, oh, incredible, incredible. Um, and of course, he did go on to release albums as well, didn't he? I love the pictures. These are very 60s ish, aren't they? A picture of, of him with his dog on the front, front well, that, cover. That picture with the dog, they sent a very special photographer from London to do the EMI cover. And they went all around London, here, there, on the docks, on the thing, up the tower, all, everywhere. And he got back to the garden and he said, oh, just let's have a picture with this dog. I love my dog. And that's the picture they put on the front. You can see the grass hasn't been cut. <laughs> the picture they used, it's so lovely. And the dog was very photogenic. He always looked at the photographer, and Ken's trying to make him look away at the sky. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> and, and, and obviously, he played every, every theatre. I think I, I don't think there's any way he didn't actually play, but we've got something quite special here, because I think this is the Nottingham Empire. This is a build from his first, I think, professional show. That's and then, and then, and then we've got a picture inside the Leeds Varieties Theatre, yeah. which obviously is, is another really City special Varieties. place. Very fond of the Leeds City Varieties, and I think they're going to honour him there something later this year. But I can't talk about it yet. But they're going to do something. There's going to be a programme from there, especially. Looking well, I'll tell you what, and you've just reminded me. I, I must mention this: that uh, a very good friend of mine, Graham Hibberson, who was the um, sculptor. Yeah. He's actually been commissioned, hasn't he, to do a new um, uh, port, um, a statue 
of yeah. Ken. Um, can, what, what can you tell us about that? Where's that going to go? Well, I know that he he was asked to do it by the Friends of the Grand at the Blackpool Grand Theatre, and I've asked also if I can do if we can make a further copy, which would be nice, I think, to go in. But um, uh, in the City Varieties. But the one he's been commissioned to do is for the Grand, the first one. The, and the, the sculpture is the guy who's done Markham and Wise. In fact, he did Laurel and Hardy, and I think Ken unveiled it at Ulverston, didn't he? Yes, he did. He unveiled that one. Oh, he's done that amazing one of uh, Fred Truman bowling. And it's just as the hand, as he, the ball leaves the hand, it's the most amazing picture. That, well, that's where, I'm not sure which town that's in. It's where Fred Truman came from. Is it Skipton? Not sure. Uh, uh, I, it certainly. I mean, obviously Yorkshire, but um, yeah. uh, but in terms of in terms of the artwork, and uh, uh, there's another lovely picture that's on the back of the book. Actually, I'm just going to show it. Um, and what a great portrait that is. And also, I think the, the sculpture that's the one in Lime Street Station in Liverpool, isn't it? That's, or or maquette of it. That's that's right. That's not Graham's. That was a Liverpool chap did that. And the picture behind is David Cobley, who did the portrait that's in the National Portrait Gallery. Um, he did this one as well, uh, which I love because it shows, Ken always said he was two people, the performer and the man at home and, you know, the man off stage. And that he never saw that one. It's sad. It, it, David Cobley had done it, um, taken obviously drawings and things, but never completed it and Ken never knew about it, sadly. What comes across in the book is that he, he seems to be a very um, um, uh, mod modest man and... Um, yeah. Oh, took his comedy very seriously, didn't he? I mean, he was very well read in the art of it. But but how did he react to actually having a statue of himself in the middle of Liverpool? He must have loved it. But was it? He, he seems to me a very humble guy. He didn't know about it. And um, they came to me. It was the train company, the, um, uh, the transport company did it and asked me, um, can I keep it secret? They wanted to do this. And they were going to have another person in it. And they suggested one or two people, but then they said, who would I suggest? I said, well, what about Bessie Braddock? Because they might have been slightly different apart in political views and everything, but they did used to meet on the train going to London. He'd come home every Sunday when he was at the Palladium, and they would meet on the train and have a good old discussion. And uh, they were even pictured at the Cavern doing a, a publicity night with, with um, Harold Wilson, Betty Braddock, Bassett Braddock and Ken. Um, so he knew her quite well, and that that port, that uh, statue in Liverpool Station is called Chance Encounter, Chance Meeting, and it's a picture of um, Bessie Braddock. Uh, in the I'm age. right. I'm right as well. I think, aren't I, in saying that Ken used to say to people, "I'll meet you next to me in the station." Yes, that's right. <laughs> he, was very, he was quite surprised to have it. He was, he was very surprised, quite humbled. He said, "Oh, that's such a thrill." Um, so it was a nice surprise to him. Said, yeah, I'll meet you. At there. It's a good point. People say now we'll meet. People have it as a meeting point. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and of course, uh, on the back of all this, um, it, 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 which wasn't that, that long ago, he, he was knighted, wasn't he? he? He actually became, everybody were calling him sir anyway, but he actually became knighted. What kind of special day was that to him and you? Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing, yes. It was wonderful. Yes. When was that, Anne? Just remind us. That was, that was actually um, March... He was actually knighted, Mark, the, the occasion was March the 2nd or 3rd, um, 2017. Just the last year of his life, yes. And then the other big occasion, obviously, was his 90th birthday. Yes, that was just before he was knighted, yes. Yeah, that was just amazing. lovely. I, I mean, there is so many stories in here and some great anecdotes as well. Um, I, I, it, it's, it, it does say it's an intimate biography, but it's certainly not kiss and tell, is it? It's about celebrating the comedian, the singer the actor. That's right. It's, uh, um, I hope it's interesting enough. I have had some lovely response, um, replies from people, uh, uh, comments and super letters. Um, it does seem to be going down well. Um, and not that there's much you could kiss and tell, but I didn't, uh, it, it, it isn't that sort of a book, but it is interesting, I hope. <laughs> Well, we, do you know what? We're also if if um, if if people are um, are wanting to get the questions in, get some in because we'll uh, we, I'm already looking against some nice comments. Uh, and just remind people if you um, if you're watching tonight and you you like and share this post on whichever uh, platform you're watching on, uh, we'll pick a winner uh, in the next 24 hours, and and you'll actually get a copy of the signed book. 
Um, so, um, Aaron, we, we, we've actually got one or two people who are, who are joining in and asking. So I've got Margaret Smith here saying, I love the book, so good to know more about this wonderfully talented man. I feel so grateful that I saw so many of his shows in Southport and in York. Well, thanks for that, Margaret. It's a, it's a lovely tribute. Um, and uh, we've, got, uh, we've got another one here from uh, Steve James who's saying, Lady Anne, how on earth did you have the stamina to keep up with Sir Ken, organising the tour, sorting the props, setting everything up, performing in the show, selling merchandise, and then getting Sir Ken packed up and safely home? And thank you for sharing your life with us, Steve oh, James. Wow, lovely. That's lovely. I, so, I, must admit, I had, did have friends helping with the merchandise, but sometimes it was with other people in the show. We... We just were travelling, peripatetic show, you know, it was good fun, great fun. I I, I loved every minute of it. it I, I'm good. sure you did. I, I, there, there is a little story I'd like you to share with, uh, uh, with us as well. And um, the nearest picture I've got to uh, to, uh, to show him what, uh, what it must have been like is, uh, I think we've got a nice picture somewhere I'm trying to dig it out. Here we go. This is uh, in the dressing room with uh, with Ken. And I know that you, you in the book you, you say that obviously it shows did go on for hours. I mean, five hours, I think, some of them. Uh, and, and it'd be the wee small hours of the morning before you had to, and you were the last people to leave the theatre. And one night, there were you and Ken left in the theatre, and I think you had to go to the ladies, and yeah. you were attacked by a panther. Well, Can you just tell us a story behind that? We don't know what it was. We were in Bridlington, and um, I was driving at that time, and I said, I'll, I'll have a little rest before I drive, so... He said, right, we're ready to go. So I said, OK, so I'll make myself comfortable, pop to the loo. And this theatre, it's more modern now, but it had an old-fashioned loo and the bath was separated by a tiny uh, prefabricated bit of wood up to there and about, about sort of three feet high and then two or three feet of frosted glass and then about three or four feet of uh, space above it. And so I went to the bathroom, as you do, go to the toilet, and uh, all of a sudden this thing made a lot of noise. Boom, something seemed to hit this partition and when I looked the frosted glass there was this face and it was a leopard but this leopard his face was going up and up and his claws were coming over the top where I've got this three foot space and he's, he's actually nearly getting over so I shot down very quickly out of that cubicle <laughs> yeah didn't want to share it with a leopard and this was a magician's um... yeah a lovely magician called Johnny Hart and he wanted to go to a party with the girls that, that it was obviously a Friday, Saturday night or something. And um, he thought he'd just leave the, the leopard there, nobody will mind. Forgetting uh, Ken was still in the theatre. And that might... Anyway, because uh, he normally would take it back to his digs and he, got a, he was staying at a farm. So he just left it there in the bath. In, unbelievable. In the... I mean, that wouldn't happen today, would it, I suppose? Well, you know, but it's, uh... it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Um, uh, and, and then uh, the other th the other thing is obviously like we were saying that um, we he, he was such a varied entertainer, but he decided that he wanted to do a little bit more for the kids, didn't he? And that's where the Diddy Men came along. That's now, uh, just tell me that the phrase Diddy was obviously meant small. In fact, he talked about Diddy David Hamilton, who I think became known as that, didn't he? Right. But Did just he... tell me that, how his great uncle. We've got a picture of him here. How he inspired him to form uh, to create the Diddy Men. Well, it was it was a word they used all the time for anything small. It's sort of in Liverpool people call things call, call things Diddy, but they certainly was a family word they used used for their uncle Jack, Diddy Uncle Jack, uh, Ken's uh, great uncle Jack, his father's uncle, and um, he was very small and he obviously had damaged legs I think from birth, so he was very very short, um, a lovely little man with a big fat tummy, and. Um, uh, so he modelled the Diddy Men on that. I remember years ago when I first knew him, he used to draw Diddy Men before he introduced them to real life, as it were. Um, but he always said, I need something so I can communicate with children when he was doing pantomime and things. So inventing the Diddy Men was very good, really. Yeah, and, and obviously his Uncle Jack wore the big hats and things as well, so it, all, it were all a bit of a caricature, of it, wasn't it? Yeah. So that was for the kids, and I mean, that went down a storm. Um, now, I'm just going to show there as well, uh, that, uh, he's actually all in the ventriloquist dummy, um, which is Dickie Mint, isn't it? One of the Diddy Men. And I, he, was so, he, loved the, he loved that prop so much that I think, didn't, weren't you actually thinking of burying him with it at one point? Well, I'll put, um, yes, I did say that. I, it's true. I did think about it. And then I thought, well, in a way, he continues. 
so I didn't. Um, thank goodness you didn't, because it's just a piece of social culture history, isn't it? In fact, I, I know that um, um, uh, uh, when Ken was around, really he didn't, uh, he was so private, he didn't have anybody around to the house, did he? No TV cameras or anything like that. No, um, but but he did build an extension, or and, and it's full of his props because I know that the um, I think it was Tony and 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 and, and also David who went down to have a look and to chat to you, and they were like kids at, at Christmas when they went in there, and they saw all the props, the big bass drum and and Dickie Mint and and the big you know um, the fur coats and the tittling sticks. So you know it, you've still got all that then, lady. Huh? Well, a lot a lot of stuff, and there's a garage full of stuff and container full of stuff and it's amazing um yes there's a plan to do an exhibition in the next year or so at liverpool museum um and, be, and, be, and beyond that you know i mean obviously it's your family home at present you don't want thousand people queuing outside to get in when you're having your breakfast but i guess at some stage you know it would be nice to turn oak house into a into a, a, a ken Dobb museum could that happen <coughs> excuse me i suppose it could um um but uh, that's when I'm gone because I enjoy living here and I don't think I like a museum at the same time. Excuse me. Got everything. <laughs> well, hey, listen, if that's the case, uh, it's not going to be for many, many years. I can tell that. Um, I, it was interesting, actually, that um, obviously, you know, you, you, you do, there's nothing that you don't talk about in the book. Uh, and there are some particular subjects. Uh, and obviously, it is about your life together with him. I mean, one of the things is that there was a 14-year age gap. Now, it, at the time when you actually started seeing Ken, in the 50s and 60s, I think life was a lot slower and, and generations melted a little bit closer together. 14 years might seem a bit of a challenge, but did it, did it, did it ever cause you any issues? Or did, no, no, did, not, not at all. I always think of it as 13, but you're probably right, Mr. About 13 and a half. Um, no, I mean, um, I first met him in 61 when I was in a show, in his show, um, a dancer, and we'd chat and get along, just got along like two friends really, it was amazing, a sort of friendship started, uh, yes. Um, and he, and he, he, he was such an energetic guy, wasn't he, he was full of energy, I mean like, you know, he was still performing, wasn't he, when he was, it, when he reached 90 and he got big plans to do another tour. Oh, um exactly we had certain dates we're in i mean he was doing uh, when he was 90 he was doing the last shows he did was just two months before he passed away you know um the december that was the last show he did yeah. absolutely incredible um i i've got um i've got some more people here that have uh, mentioned uh, things as well so i've got jack preston saying love the book i love sir ken since my granddad showed me uh, in when i was three and i first met him in wh smith's in liverpool town when another audience when uh, Ken, with Ken Dodd was released and uh, let me sing happiness to him. I was four years old, love him, and I always will. He's touched so many people's lives, hasn't he, uh, Lady Anne? What's wonderful there is that's a young person, and he did, he was able to um, go right across the, the type, uh, the, the level of intelligence of people. You know, he'd gone from the intelligence so right down to everyday people who love to come to a show. He could entertain all those. And all ages, really. All ages. Yeah, I've got another one here. Uh, he was a remarkable man. I saw him twice at the Cruel Lyceum. I was only eight when I saw him for the first time. And now I'm 26. And my grandma took me both times. Both memories that are not forgotten. I really hope you will get to speak at the Conservative Ladies Club at Hill Valley Wick Church. That's where my grandma is hoping to see you. So hopefully you'll make it as COVID restrictions ease off for all of us. So... Yeah, that's a great point, Graham, and um, thank you for um, thank you for your comment on that. And, and Lady Anne, well, what's nice about what we're doing tonight is that obviously you've not been able to get out and about to really book sign and, and do things due to COVID. But hopefully, you know, we're putting you in front of a, a lot of people tonight. What what would you say to them? Why should they buy this book? Um, oh gosh, well, I hope you buy it because. You've seen Ken on stage, you've heard about him, you know about him, and it'll bring back some lovely memories as, as you've been talking about, Graham. Um, and um, I, I really, I feel a bit bashful, really. I think, as I say, I've been very pleased with the response. And I think, and people say, I can't put it down. And somebody just put 
an, an email to me yesterday. I've got to tell you, I was a bit dis disappointed and I started this email and I thought, oh dear. And then it said, when it finished, I just wanted yeah. it to go on and on. Yeah. It's a I, lovely comment to make. Listen, you know, I wanted to be well versed in the book before we, we spoke tonight. Um, so technically it was my job, but I've enjoyed it that much. I'm reading it a second time. Honestly, it's beautiful. It's just great. And I, I couldn't give it a better compliment than that, uh, uh, Anne. Um, I, 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 uh, we've got some more people asking questions as well. I've got one here saying, uh, this is from um, Rachel from Biggleswade, who says, question, if you could go back to a day when Ken, with Ken and relive it, what day would that be? And uh, you can have a couple of days if you like. Thank you, the book is fantastic. And that's from Rachel in Biggleswade. Um, I suppose in actual fact, it was in 82, when I went with him to get his OBE, and then in March 2017, uh, when he was knighted, which was lovely. Yeah, I suppose very, very special yeah. times for very you. Proud very, very proud of we, we, We've also got here Wendy and Michael Merwill of Shankar and Isle of Wight. So we had the pleasure of seeing Ken and Lady Anne a couple of times in Norwich and Wimbledon. Uh, and indeed, on one event, we were in the front row and Ken handed me a much treasured tickling stick. Yes. And at the end, uh, having teased Michael during the performance with best wishes. Uh, so who was uh, his favourite comedian? Or, or hero, and we also wondered if Sir Ken had a particular part of the country he preferred to perform in, or uh, that uh, got the best audience reaction. So a couple of questions there, uh, yeah. and thanks for your memories there, uh, Wendy and Michael. I'm sure that um, a lot of people who are watching tonight have had equally uh, fantastic uh, nights uh, watching Ken. But two questions, who was his favourite comedian and or hero? Let's get that one first. Well, he, he, he always said his heroes were the people he, when he was a child he grew up. Um, and he was taken to see them at the Liverpool, it was called the City, the, the uh, Shakespeare Theatre of Varieties. And he saw some wonderful people there. But he particularly, as a child and growing up teenager, he liked Arthur Askey, so full of energy. And um, um, why can't I think of all the right names? But there was that era of comedians. Um, and he liked creative comedians. He liked, he, he liked a lot of comedians. Um, and... Uh, they had to be creative and individual and a bit crazy and a bit... Yeah, and a lot of comedians liked him. Again, I'm just going to show this with Norman Wisdom and there's Roy Hub there as well, isn't there? Oh, yes, that's one of the... And a good... Um, he liked uh, people like Eric Sykes and... Um, but when when he was growing up, there were, and, you know, the day war grew up, I can't I think of his name. You know who I mean. Ooh, the I know he mentions uh, uh, Arthur Askey is mentioned two or three times in the book, um, yeah. and I'm sure that. Um, and as a child, Tommy Handley, uh, Ted Ray, um, and and of course he liked uh, quite a few television things. He enjoyed watching Lucille Ball and people. Those are the old days watching those, and then in the more modern times, as um, uh, Frasier um, and uh, uh, Dad's Army and. Um, a lot of, so what did he think about modern day? What did he think about modern day uh, comics? Because obviously they were a lot more observational. Although Ken started to bring a bit of more of that into his art, didn't he? Observational one in a way. He, he was. He, he had already started that sort of vein. Uh, but well, he loved them so long as they got good laughs. Um, I mean, um, he didn't. He, he didn't like swearing, and he didn't like what he calls the the mucky end of gags because he felt it was unnecessary. He said the good comics didn't need to be mucky, and I mean mucky, and sometimes they're not even funny. I mean, when he had a society called the Good Turn Society, and they met just men only three times a year, and they were all good turns. It was a double meaning. There were acts who were good turns, and they were doing good turns. And uh, they'd have a few mucky gags and all that, but they were funny. You know, sometimes mucky gags aren't even funny that you hear on telly. Anyway, we, we're getting so many. We're getting so many comments here as well, and I, I, I'm trying to show as many of them as that I can. Um, uh, but I've got another one here, Jack Preston. Loved the book. Uh, I loved Sir Ken since my granddad showed me him when I was three. Um, again, uh, we, 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 I think we've already uh, had that comment. And we, but we, yeah. we're talking. Oh, this last show was my birthday uh, in November 27. Say hi from Ronica uh, and Dave. She knows who we are. Seen us soon. Oh. So there's, uh, there's lots of friends on here as well. Um, I've got one, uh, hello Lady Anne, the book uh, looks very interesting to read and I'd like to ask, 
what is it was it like living with such a funny man uh, as Ken and your fondest memories you shared with him? Yeah, I mean, was he funny all the time? Well, no, nobody's funny all the time. He was a serious, uh, serious thinker, uh, but he would see funny things in everyday things. He used to say, um, humour is like a, a buckled mill wheel, as Aristotle said it. Um, a buckled mill wheel is something that doesn't is a little bit out of true. And if you think about humour, you can just turn something a bit and it can be funny. But he could explain it much better than I could. But I heard him explain that a few times when people said, what is it? He said, it just seems something a bit out of true and look at it, things a different way. He did, I think it says in the book quite a few times, actually, doesn't it, that he um, he took his comedy seriously. And in fact, I think he had one of the biggest libraries of, of books. He did yeah. a tour once, didn't he, when he was exploring comedy. And I yeah. think he thought, oh, hang on a minute, I think people want to come here for the gags and to hear me tell the gags. So he, he extended it then to become a different type of tour. Yeah. But I think one of the reasons why he was famous for going on and doing these like hour long hours and hours of, of material is yeah. that he never liked taking anything out of the show, did he? I know that's what Tony put in the book. He didn't like taking that. He did. He did sort of. Well, it's like the things you know well and you're used to, and you know how they go, and they lead on to something else, and then he'd extend it. But you've got to get into that mood. So I suppose that's why he kept the original gags in some of them. You know. Um, but as, it, as, it, as they used to say, well, the doors aren't locked and they were still there and they were still coming to see him when he was 90. Absolutely. Well, not just coming to see him, they were coming to see both of you uh, because um, you were on stage quite a bit with him as well, weren't you? And in fact, we've got um, a, a question. Somebody's uh, just asking a little question here. Uh, does Lady Dodd intend to carry on performing in some capacity? Always enjoyed her singing as part of the shows. Oh, that's very kind. That's very kind. What I have been doing to, before lockdown, uh, I did start doing talks, which I I really enjoy actually. Um, just to talk to local people, and I, I don't. Um, it, it's just good fun. Yeah, I, I'm a bit of a ham. Ken used to call me a ham because I always like being on stage and doing things on stage. So it's it's a bit. You're still performing in a way when you're giving a talk. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, that one in crew. Well, uh, actually, for the crew lady, it's down in Whitchurch. I was due to do that um, only a month into lockdown, but we had to cancel. Yeah, what's going to happen um, for people who do want to meet you in person? And um, uh, and, and obviously, we, you can get the book signed, folks. If you jump onto the, um, I'll just put the banner up again. It'll, it'll give you all the details. In fact, you can see it there. It's the ypbookoffer.co.uk. Um, and uh, for seventeen ninety nine, we're actually it's UK free delivery as well. And yeah. Uh, Lady Anne, you're actually going to sign copies. I think there's a, there's a, you'll sign them personally as well if people jump on there and say who they want them signing for. Yeah, I'm delighted, yes. But will you be getting back out and about and doing some of these uh, signings hopefully after, after we get a bit more ease on lockdown? Yes, I hope so. What I have been doing, we're making a documentary on um, various things to do with his legacy, different things we're doing uh, with Ken Dodd Charitable Foundation. Um, and this, we've been making this film during this COVID. Every time the lockdown eases a bit, and then we all have tests, and there are certain rules you follow. And we've been doing, uh, putting quite a lot of interviews together, detailing these different things. You know, fun, 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 absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to actually um, uh, just reflect uh, just on one of these pictures that we showed a bit earlier, and this is the one with the Beatles. So in the 60s, yeah, uh, when Ken was like really at the height of his fame, I suppose, on, on the on doing the London Palladium and the, the comedy shows, he, he turned his, well, he'd already been singing from an early age, I suppose, but in terms of his recording material, he, he went ballistic, didn't he? He sold millions of records. Do you think if he had not been a comedian, that he would have, he, he would have still been a, a successful singer or an actor? I, th I think it's just another part of him. He enjoyed the singing as well as the comedy. And in his show, he always sang some serious songs. And um, uh, I mean, he always ended up with a song, uh, Absent Friends, in the later years. He was, And he said, I'm, I'm singing that, remembering all the people we've, you've met, you know, the people you knew well, the people you loved, the members of your family. And he always sang very sincerely. And he meant every word when he sang a song. That was the way he was. Uh, but of course, he did comedy songs as well and wrote to Mandalay and things like that. It was interesting, though, wasn't it, that the comedy songs, and I mean, people like uh, Charlie Drake and, and 
uh, Eric Sykes and various others recorded comedy songs. And and, and I remember I remember them that, that Ken did like Where's My Shirt? I think that was one of them. <laughs> but they weren't as successful as his as his, his serious singing voice, were they? That's true. They they weren't particularly. They didn't promote them. They didn't. It wasn't particularly on promoting. It was just good to have a comedy song to put in the act. Yeah, Where's My Shirt? Yeah, that's right. And. Um, so I suppose what with COVID and, and the rest of it, I mean, Ken's only been gone now, isn't it, for about three years. In fact, I, I remember it distinctly because it was the it was the week after I lost my dad uh, when we, when we lost Ken. Um, and um, I, it's flown by really in one sense, but then again, it seems like a lifetime. But I suppose you, you, obviously your life has changed completely because he was still doing like three shows a week, wasn't he? Oh, at least yes, yes. So I uh, do. You, do you miss it, Anne? Do you miss that? Yes, but I'm getting on in years myself, and I think that I don't know where I get the energy from. But I, I still, if you're enjoying what you're doing, it's not work really. It's just, it, it was a routine. I mean, there were times when um, I remember in the snow and rain outside the theatre in Leamington Spa, and I couldn't get the key out of the roof rack, and I put things up in there, and I thought, oh gosh, if I don't get the key out, I can't drive the car. <laughs> and he's busy signing autographs, and I, I just, anyway, we did get going. But I remember thinking, Oh, I mustn't complain to myself. One of these days I won't be doing this and I'll miss it. And that's so true. Yeah. yeah. I suppose, does it give you comfort actually being in, in like living in Oak House still as well, where there must be a lot of memories there? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've been asked, would you want to move? I don't, why would I? I spent 40 years here, so, yeah. I've got to ask you as well, he's famous for his tickling sticks, but did he actually get the feather dusters out and clean around the house? <laughs> no. Not really. He didn't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> he could just not make a cup of tea. That was his domestic ability. <laughs> I've got to ask you as well, Steve James uh, from Blackpool, um, obviously got great, you must have great memories there. Uh, and I know that we're out on the Blackpool Gazette as one of our titles that we're out tonight. Is uh, saying, uh, what is the aim of the Charity Foundation? It's a great idea as a legacy for Ken. Can you just explain to us about that a little bit, uh, yeah. Lydia? I'll, uh, yes, the... He started it some years before he passed away, obviously, and um, the my own um, uh, royalties are going to go into the um, Kendra Charlesman Foundation, and it sort of I have to read this to advance the education of the public in the performing arts, and to further development of public appreciation and understanding of performing arts by the support and encouragement of the work of young artists, and uh, it goes on to you know the relief of poverty and persons in the UK, etc., etc. And really providing financial assistance to other exclusively charitable organisations. Um, what I have been able to do and been involved with is a, um, a new a new theatre actually in um, Prescott, which is um, Shakespeare North, and they've had quite a bit on of it on Look North. Uh, um, no, oh, the seven o'clock one, the one show, and other things, and yeah. uh, it's quite a substantial one. And then also our church hall here, I'm sure he'd be pleased about that because that was his old school. And at the back of the book, there's a picture of that as it was. Um, and we've extended and renovated that. And that's really just starting to be used now. So it's got a real wide brief, hasn't it? The, 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 the foundation. And it's not just it's not just to all people in Liverpool. This is to all people all over the UK. The, that, the idea is that there are specific ones. They seem to be more based up this end so far, the bigger things I've done. But... I'm able to do quite a things. It's all in his name, yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I just want to show the book again. So this is what has been, has been preoccupying me for the best part of um, uh, of, of the last week or two, and uh, it's just 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 a great book. Um, and there's, I, I'm just going to put a picture of you two guys up here. Um, it's uh, it's it, it's uh, the, some of these lovely pictures that we've got of you. In fact, this this one's my favourite. And I just um, and I hope you don't mind if I read this, but. This is just from the book, and it's just basically what you said on the morning that Ken had died. And you said, I've lost a wonderful husband. My first, we first met when I was in the Ken Dodd Christmas show in 1961 at the Manchester Opera House. I have had the supreme joy and privilege of working and living with him as his partner for the past 40 years. The world has lost the most life enhancing, brilliant, creative comedian with an operatically trained voice who just wanted to make people happy. He lived to perfect his art and entertain his life. 
uh, adoring f audiences, I have been overwhelmed by the love and affection which I have already received from dear friends and the public. And I think I thank you all for being there. Thank you. And I think what a, what a lovely uh, few words you said there. Um, I, I, I suppose there's not a day and a second goes by you don't miss him. Well, I, exactly. The extraordinary thing about that piece you've just read out is that he died the night before and his nephew came over and he said there are a lot of people outside, the press, but we'll have to say something. And I sat at the computer and I just typed this out straight out without stopping and then he said do you want me to take it out there i said well no they've been waiting but i'll take it myself and you you're on another plane i can't believe i did that i can't believe i typed all that it was it seemed all right when i read it i didn't want to change it i just anyway that it was, it was beautiful be be beautiful tribute Thank beautiful you. Um, and I think when, when Ken was asked how he'd like to be remembered, uh, he, he said he, he wanted to be remembered for making people feel happy. Um, and, you know, and I suppose happiness being his, his signature tune as well. And do you know what? Um, it, 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 it was sad that we lost him, but thank goodness we've got gr lots of great uh, memories of him. And we've been given some special privileged footage, actually, uh, that I'm going to play now. So I'm just going to do this, and then we'll just come back and we'll just um, uh, answer another couple of questions from fans, uh, Lady Anne. Uh, no, but no. this this will give us a both a little breather to have a little uh, coffee or something we want to do. There's five minutes of Ken here showing us what he was all about. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ken Dodd. Been tangled. <laughs> I do. This, this, let's know what happens when you have too much vitamin C. Ah, I keep leaning towards the window. Ah, oh, oh, do you know it's snowing outside? Ah, right, let's get rid of this thing. Ah, standing here with you, ladies and gentlemen, here, this beautiful theatre. When I, when I first came on, I thought I was an outpatient. Ah, now, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is what I call a theatre. This is a place where you can sleep in comfort. Ah, and you will, I promise you. <laughs> tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very special night. Because tonight, tonight is Ticklemas Eve. Ticklemas Eve, it is, look, yeah. Tonight is Ticklemas Eve. I've had them specially re-fluffed for you tonight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, glad if you're going to get it. <laughs> this this fellow pops his clogs and he, uh, he he arrives at the gates of heaven and the, the angel said, oh yes, oh yes, Mrs. Smith, you've been a good lad, you can come in. Just one little formality. As you know, he said, everything up here is based on love. Spell the word love. He said, L-O-V-E. He said, good, you're in. Yeah, then the phone rang and the angel said, what, yes, yes, thank you, I'll be there right away. He said, uh, Mr. Smith, he said, would you just man the gate for us? There's a bit of an emergency. Got to go up the road here. The Baptists are drowning each other. Would he said, would you... Would he... Would you just man the gate? He said, if anybody comes up, just ask them a question, you know, right? So, a couple of minutes later, who should, who should come up the hill but his wife? Yes, his wife. He just, he, he said, by Joe, what are you doing? You're early. He said, no, she said, but there you are, you see. She said, the hearse overturned. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am. Never mind, she said. Yeah, here we are, you know. We're together again, aren't we? He said, yes, we are, aren't we? Yes. She said, well, can I come in? Yes, we just hang on. He said, you, you, you've, got to answer, you've got to spell a word first. Hmm? She said, what's the word? He said, Tchaikovsky. <laughs> 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 That's good, didn't you? Give yourself a migraine. No, <laughs> oh, well, you see, you'll stick like that. That's how I started. <laughs> so you've... <laughs> so you've arrived. Yes. And, uh, now, Dickie, I want you to be... I want you to be very clever tonight. Yes. And entertain the ladies and gentlemen. Yes. yes I want you to show your versatility. Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> show them how clever you are. I, I'd like you to say... I'd like to hear you say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. A peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked. So would I. <laughs> More sad. You put it upside down, love. It's me that. No, it's I. But I. No, I've got to read it. <laughs> so I it. Lower, lower, lower. 
Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. No, higher, higher, higher. Lord, Lord. No. no. Yeah, I, you should. There's two little holes there. If you look through them, you look like Tony Blair. <laughs> yeah. No, last night. Do you know the night before? Three little diddy men knocked at my door. One wore a top hat, one had a drum, and one had a pancake strapped to it. A one, two, three. Fabulous audience tonight, folks. We wish you good health, the time you enjoy it, and lots and lots of happiness. Happiness, happiness, the cradle skip that we possess. I thank the Lord that we've been blessed with more than our share of the happiness. To me, this world is a wonder. Uh, there you go. And uh, how good was that? And uh, you know, as much as we want to talk about the guy. I was falling about there. We're just loving that, loving it. Who was I? <laughs> Who was I? Is it nice to see him again on, on, on when you watch him like that? Yeah. Is it painful or is it just good memories? Oh, it, it's lovely actually. It's lovely um, because the the one that was painful is I lost a message while he was poorly in the hospital, and I was I was lucky I was able to stay there most of the time, but I had to come back and check something, and he left a message on the phone saying. Um, when are you coming back in? Are you coming back in? Are you there, honey? Are you there? And, and, I, and I was just seeing the dog outside then, so it's just a message. And it was left on the phone, and somehow I'd said, oh, I mustn't rub that out, I mustn't rub that And when I heard it, went, I thought, oh, I must make sure I move on, and I pressed delete instead of whatever. And that hurt me more than anything, because that was a message for me. You know what I mean? That was a personal yeah. message. Although I can put these tapes or anything on, um, that's quite deep, that isn't it? But it no, it's not. I think it's lovely. Um, I, but you know what? The fact is that obviously that was a bit on on YouTube, and I, I'd like to see more of Ken on TV. I know that when when the the society changed, didn't it? With the um, when people stopped going to Blackpool as much as they used to do because of the cheap flights to Spain and the rest of it, and then you know um, all the theatres that kind of changed. It, uh, with t TVs in the in the room when people could watch it for free on a Saturday night. And, and and it became hard, but Ken was still top of the tree, but they, they weren't on TV as much as I'd like to have seen. And I, I think we love seeing people like him and Tommy Cooper and Eric Markham and people like that. We'd like to see more of them. Why, why don't we see more of, of, of Ken uh, and some, revisiting some of the old tapes well, back on TV? I think they will be doing because the, 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 the best TVs were the audience with ones. But there are quite a lot of series and things, and they'll, they they do start coming back, pick, picking different ones back. But of course, when Eric and Mon Eric and Ernie were doing it, they weren't doing any theatres because they they were he wasn't well enough to do it. So they did a lot of television. They couldn't do the travelling round. So there were a lot of television shows to do, and they were given an opportunity there. But Ken just wanted to make sure he kept working and kept entertaining. So he did the the theatre work, which had to be done. You had to keep yourself up there. Um, don't forget, bless him, uh, Eric went in nineteen early 80s, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, so, um, absolutely. Um, you know, um, but uh, the the thing is, he, he always he used to say, you've got to renew yourself every so often. You've got to refresh yourself, keep up with the times and move on. And um, when they stopped doing the seasons, it sort of disappeared into doing one-nighters, which he was happy to do and that's what we did we were doing one night just a couple of nights here maybe a week here maybe i mean Malvolio shakespeare was a special event but um we did do short seasons in places and uh, yeah i i just uh, b just before we wind up Anne, and thank you for your time i do appreciate it i don't i can't believe that an hour's gone by i've, I've really enjoyed this it's been absolutely terrific um, but I did, I did just want to ask you about that. The fact that he did um, uh, some great um, acting as well, and here we've got him in Twelfth Night, isn't it? Yes. At the um, and this was in Liverpool on stage, I think. Yes. Um, uh, he could have been a, a serious actor. Um, wh why didn't he pursue more of that? Um, I think he loved being being able to be individual, do his own 
do his own thing. He loved doing the, that. It was a three-week season, um, but and he had, had various proposals given to him. We'd do this such and such a play or such and such. Or Scrooge was one of the ones he'd have rather liked to do, and uh, it's quite a few serious plays he was proposed. But the, if it goes off, you've got to sign yourself up for a period of time doing the same thing every night, and that sort of frightened him. He thought, no, I, I, could, I wouldn't be able to do that every night for months and even years on end. Um, he loved the fact that he could still be himself, be his individual. But he worked so hard when he played Malvolio. He got every, absolutely word perfect. Shakespeare, absolutely spot on. Except I think there was there wasn't the one, one night though when it went a bit wrong. And um, <laughs> can you just explain that because it's a really funny piece? Because he, he'd been told, hadn't he? He couldn't he couldn't uh, ad lib. But the one night he had to ad lib. What happened? He wouldn't have dreamt of ad libbing. He didn't need to be told. You're quite right though, because he, he wouldn't have done. People said, of course I'll keep to the script. Well, I didn't dream of ad -libbing. One night, though, he had this chain of office as it was played, and he pulled it and it broke. And all the chains went bing, bing, bing all over the floor. And the audience, oh, what's he had? Get out of that, you know. And he went, oh, my lady, when I'm with thee, I have the strength of 20 men. And the audience went, Ray, and he went, sorry, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the chain, isn't it, there that we're looking at? It just... <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. That could only happen to Ken, couldn't it? It's like me like me and my lighting, isn't it, tonight? I can't believe that happened, but there we go. I suppose things always went a little bit wrong and says because it was live. It's like tonight, we're live. Exactly. Well he, he, he was he he did a tremendous amount of ad libs and we had a wonderful drummer, Kenny Adams, um, and he would stay on stage when musicians would normally go off when he does a long comedy piece, you know, and they'd come on when they need to. But Kenny used to stay there. And Ken said to him, Any time, anything you hear you've never heard before, write it down. Because they were ad-libs. And they came from the back of his head while he's working. You're on a roll, he's doing the gags. And these ad-libs would come in. Then Dickie Mint used to say things and Ken would laugh. I mean, it was Ken's the ventriloquist. And he'd laugh at himself because he he's made Dickie Mint say something that's funny for him. <laughs> it's new. He can't Brilliant. That. But that's how the book creates hot comedy. Brilliant. We've got Andy Kane here saying my most prized possession is a tickling stick that Ken threw to me when I went to see him uh, live at the Lyceum in Sheffield. Absolutely priceless to me, that is. Uh, and and I'm, I'm sure it would be. And uh, we've got other people here uh, saw Ken at Blackpool, never stopped laughing. We've had that. Um, uh, we've, there was also somebody, I'm just trying to find the quote, actually. It was, um, uh, I'll try and find it if we can bring it up. But I, I, I remember the question because uh, it interested me. Um, and uh, in fact, it's here, I've got it. Uh, Barry Soul says, a question, Sir Ken was famous for his giggle map. Uh, does a physical map exist and will it ever be shown? And this is where he, 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 people around the country responded in different ways. So we actually, it was very, it was a science to, to Ken, wasn't it, a comedy? Yeah. Uh, it, does a map exist then? Uh, well, uh, in actual uh, fact, we, we're, we're doing this within this documentary I'm making. And the girl who does the technical side of it has been putting something on social media and Twitter. I tend not to do those myself, but she shows me what she's doing. And every day of the year, we've, put, we've got over 300 theatres that we've played over the years, well over 300. And she's been putting a picture of the theatre up on this, on Twitter, on social media, saying, do you remember they're going to, did you go this night? And she puts the night we last played it, because I've got a list of everywhere we've been. So you could call that the map. But she's got a map, she's got all the dots on it. Uh, so there is a giggle map. He, he, that's what he called it because we travelled from from Land's End right up to the Shetland Islands. You know, the Garrison Theatre in the Shetland. Absolutely, Islands. And, and everywhere in between. Yeah. So and we found out tonight that you're making a documentary about him. There's another statue going to be uh, made. Um, uh, we also hope that at some stage, but not in, not for a long, long time, that your home's going to be turned into the museum. Um, what what else is planned? Um, obviously, you've got some more signings you'd like to do out and about, and some talks. Um, and I suppose people can get in touch with you through your book publisher if they want to sign you up for doing yeah. more of that. Anything else planned uh, to remember, Ken? Oh yes, all sorts of things. The, the hospital here, we've done a uh, they've they've altered a building so that it can have the the doctors that are on call can have a rest area and recuperation area and. Uh, paid quite a lot into that which is very nice from the fund and then there, there's a wonderful story that was um i picked up about the time when we first brought the book out it's a year ago they needed uh, alder hay wonderful children's hospital uh, a great group of people the friends 
the um, League of Friends there, who tends to run shows for them over the years. Um, and they, I said, give me your bucket list. And one of the things was a machine that is like a you know, heart and lung machine, keeps going for tiny, tiny babies. And they got one, but they needed another if there was an emergency. And sort of I was able to buy that through the League of Friends. I did it so that they can get some credit because they're the ones that were raising money, looking for money. And um, the first week it arrived, it was used on a tiny baby. Reese, um, and I'm hopefully going to meet him. It said in the paper that the parents wanted to meet me because it saved this, this little boy's life. So oh, what that, beautiful. That, it's just incredible to me. I don't want to claim any credit for that. That's, that's Ken's money that I didn't No, oh, that's, that's, that's just fantastic. I fantastic. It, it, it really... That really means a lot. So the, the number of people li whose lives that he touched, it, it was incredible, yeah. wasn't it? And continues to yeah. touch people's lives, uh, Lady Anne. I think that the, the foundation that you've launched as well is just, just terrific. Yeah. Um, I, 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 and for me, there should be a statue of Ken Dodd in every city in, 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 in Britain, never mind about Liverpool. Uh, I, I think he's just, uh, a, a, he was just such a great man, a great comedian. In fact, he was the king of comedy for me. Um, okay. Super. And you've done him justice. This book is terrific. I'll just remind people again. Here we go. Here we go. This is the, the squire of Naughty Ash uh, and his lady. And just re people, I mean, obviously, if you live in Liverpool, they'll, they'll think we're crazy saying this, but uh, people beyond Liverpool don't realise that Naughty Ash actually is a real place. <laughs> yeah, people, I've got people even now saying, oh, does it exist? Goodness. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. All right, well, listen. Lydia, I can't thank you enough. Um, I just hope that we, we we sell lots and lots of copies of this book. Um, if you've um, if you've not got it yet, then obviously, what well, less than twenty quid and get it signed. It's going to make um, uh, lots of people happy, uh, uh, as as Ken wanted to do. He, 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 it was all about making people happy, and, and he continues to do it through this fantastic book that you and let's not forget Tony Nicholson's written to get you written it together um and uh, uh, your life story is only a few pages really in this about you when you were a bluebell girl um i'm just going to finish with that again uh because um uh, it, it was a really special time for you and a great story um uh, about how you got the uh, audition but i'll let people discover a bit more of that by reading the book but i think there's another book in in you i, I reckon that we could have the uh, the lady Anne story the the, the the lady of Naughty Ash and this squire and her squire. Uh, what do you reckon? I'm not sure about that now. <laughs> I thought too much, so perhaps it makes you think I've got things to tell. Well, listen, thank you ever so much for your time tonight. I do appreciate it. Um, uh, big shout out again uh, for this book. I'm just going to show the book and just remind people uh, as we play out uh, that you can actually. Um, you can win a copy of it, like and share this post, but we're going to pick a winner in the next 24 hours. But why don't you guarantee you get yourself a copy? It's hardback, it's got 32 pages, some great photos. We've only seen a few of them in selection here. And for the first time, it, tell, it tells us more about the, uh, the, the, the real Ken Dodd, the, public, uh, the private Ken Dodd, not the public one that we saw so much of. Um, and to be honest with you, um, what I would say is that what it's done from my point of view is that I've just, I've just, I love the man even more now. I know more about him. I, I, it would have been lovely for him to have written his own biography, but you know, we've got the next best thing. It might even be better, Lady Anne, because you'll maybe tell a few things here that Ken might have even kept to himself. Um, what was the most finally? Just what was the most challenging thing about writing the book? And, and is there anything that you regret not putting in the book? Oh, well, there are all sorts of things I think, oh, we should put that in. Uh, yes, a little thought. Nothing in particular, but just little incidents keep coming to you. you, you everybody should always write notes down when you think of them, because you think I won't forget, and you do. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I think the challenging thing was, well, it, the whole thing was a challenge, but Tony made it easy. He, he um, was able to ask the questions that made me give him information that worked fine. And the way we did it, where I'm talking specifically, it's in italics. So it doesn't have to keep saying, and Anne said this, Anne said that. Uh, but it's all my story of his life, really. He's got it out of me, you know, for the book. Yeah. It's fantastic, fantastic. And, and you know what, like we say, Ken did want to make people happy. Um, it, was a, it was a life well lived. And uh, boy, did he make people happy. 
Uh, Anne, uh, thank you ever so much for your time tonight. Thank you very much for inviting me, Graham. I've had a lovely time. And thank you for thank all you. the that have come and all the public lovely comments. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry we didn't get time to answer them all, but I'm sure that, you know, you jump on Facebook, you'll be able to see them all out there. And I just wanted to play out to Anne with a, a, some more pictures from the book and just a little bit of uh, music uh, uh, to, to play us out tonight. So thanks for watching, folks. I don't know what you've got planned for the rest of your Thursday night. Um, if you've liked this, um, like and share this post, please. Uh, tell everybody about it. It'll be available on demand afterwards. Um, people need to go out and buy this book, and I'm sure it'll do well right now through until Christmas. But what a great summer summer read it is as well. Um, so, so jump on it, buy the book, uh, enjoy it. And if you like what we've done tonight, please tell us, because we'd love to bring you more of these fantastic uh, author evenings as well. Um, so uh, from me and from Lady Anne, uh, I'll just say goodbye and good night. And here's some more great pictures from this fantastic book, which is The Squire of Naughty Ash and His Lady. Thank you for your time, folks. Thank you.